It's all about the Monetary Policy Committee as, uh, later on this afternoon giving their decision as here in Nigeria. There we are. So we've got one out of three so far. Monday it was Ghana. They held, we just talked about that with Arnold Dublin Green of Cordos Asset Management. Today is Nigeria. It, the, the, the thinking, at least according to the survey from Bloomberg, is that there'll be a hike. But if I remember correctly, they put a little asterisk there because it could be a hold. So um, here is the chief executive, group chief executive officer of uh, Cor Cor um, Coronation, uh, coronation, Kauri Asset Management, Mr. Johnson Chukwu, making the case that they will probably be a hold. Let's take a listen to him. I think it will be too soon for to take that back to further uh, um, tighten. Remember that the last uh, MPC meeting was just a month ago, and the full effect of that, uh, the policy announcements are yet to be fully felt. But as it stands today, you can't really say the economy has fully absorbed the implication of the 400 basis point increase in monetary policy rate and the 12.5% increase in, in cash reserve ratio. Um, there's always what they call lag effect. And that means that some of the impact of these policies will begin to manifest in subsequent months. So I think it will be too early for the Monetary Policy Committee to tighten again, just barely a month after they made an announcement. Remember that the practice was not for them to meet on a monthly basis. There was always a two-month period, which was to allow for the effect of their policies to begin to permeate in the economy. So I think me for that just a, a month after they had increased it by 400 basis points and increased car reserve ratio to 45 basis uh, percent maybe too soon and uh, one the most appropriate thing is to wait and weigh the impact of the policy pronouncement they made in, the, in, in, in february all right, the debate rages on. Uh, joining us in the studio, uh, we have the Executive Director, Chief Risk Officer, Fidelity Bank PLC, Mr. Kevin uh, Ugoke. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Good morning to you. Uh, so, uh, lots to discuss here. And, and another thing that is, uh, we're probably hoping to hear from the uh, CBN Governor, Yemi Cardoso, is possibly the recapitalization discussions. Maybe there might be some metrics. Um, I mean, how is Fidelity looking on the recapitalization? What do you expect? What do you think? Uh, how, how you, I guess, macro view. For recapitalization of banks in Nigeria, well, what's what's your vantage point? Yeah, um, clearly, bank, recapital, re, bank recapitalization is a very important issue because that positions banks to uh, support support the economy in the best possible way. Uh, there's there's been some macro stresses, I must say. Uh, the devaluation, in particular, has been very very important, a very material issue, and that has made banks to need more funds, more more capital. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's insightful that the CBN is taking its time to come up with uh, precise modalities for recapitalization, which makes sense because the last thing you want to do is to, the economy is already, it's already stressed, so to speak. So you kind of don't want to throw in much more in terms of more, um, more upsets to the economy, so to speak. Yeah, you know? yeah. So um, it's good they're taking their time. I guess there's going to be a lot of consultation within this period. And whatever comes up, whatever they come up with at the end of the day, it's just important that they shall allow banks, I would advise they allow yeah. banks, to give them time to, to get things sorted out properly. I see. I, if, if I parse your language, it sounds like uh, you, you are moving towards a hold with no changes to the parameters to, to allow uh, the economy absorb the last uh, rate hike that we saw. Speaking of the last rate hike, uh, the cash reserve ratio. Um, and again, very happy to have you know, the banking sector with us to talk about this. The feeling has been that that, 45, that hike um, to 45% was you know, pretty stringent. Now, the central bank will say it's because of liquidity in the system they want to drain. But how, 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 are, how are you uh, dealing with that? Look, it's, by the way, it's fantastic that I'm talking to the chief risk officer. <laughs> you guys, you have a lot of responsibility. So thanks for joining us once again. But how are you dealing with the CR? How are you dealing with that? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. That hike was one of the major decisions of the MPC. Yeah. Uh, 400 basis points. The, the immediate impact was that about 5 trillion naira of funds mm. will be mopped out of, the ban of banks wow. by the central bank. Wow. So automatically that means liquidity squeeze, interest rates will go up, both on the liability side, that's in terms of deposits you take, and also loans that you give to customers. Now these two rate changes usually don't happen simultaneously or in parallel. So the tendency is that Margins for banks will be squeezed at some point. And with that squeeze in margin, of course, uh, it means profitability at the end of the day will be a problem. Now, on the other side, government securities will become more, more, in, more attractive because rates on those, on those securities have gone up. 
Now, if you now marry the uh, increase of 45% to for, of CRR of 45% to a liquidity ratio of 30%, that leaves bank with very limited funds to lend. Right. Now, if you have an attractive government sector, you'll probably be asking yourself, from a risk perspective, where do I put my money? Mm. So you may see a squeeze on funding to the real sector. Okay? And net net, if you put all of this together, banks will probably struggle with, the, with profitability on a business as usual basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they all, what are we doing in Fidelity? We're doing quite a few things. Okay. Yeah. We are optimizing our balance sheet, looking at the asset side to optimize returns there, on the liability side also to optimize returns, essentially to uh, protect our margins. Right. And we're protecting margins. We're also looking at non-interest revenue sources, our electronic banking play, our digital banking play, transaction banking, treasury play, all of those just to protect our overall profitability. So that's what we're doing. It's a major decision. Yeah. And I bet you it's affecting every one of you us. You know, I could talk to you for the next one hour. So I have so many questions. Um, okay, look, the real sector, this Fidelity SME hub, um, support to small, medium enterprises and so on and so forth. What's, I mean, I can imagine now with you having to, again, you're the chief, chief risk officer, you're looking at a way to deploy funds, support this, support that. How, how's that working out? SME is a major focus area for Fidelity Bank, and the SME Hub is a key strategic initiative for us. Yeah. Um, it's, it's going to be based, physical, the physical hub itself will be based in Lagos, okay. and it's a place where SMEs can come, engage with experts, get counseling on their business transactions, their business, uh, their entire business profile, and how to grow business overall. I will also have a digital play, which will reach out to those who are outside Lagos. It's important to be nationwide. So, um, so it's, it's a very key part, and we're set to go live with it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a place to visit. Yeah, yeah. And I say, SMEs, go visit this hub mm. and get the best out of it. And you, of course, yeah, I mean, I take it you, you're like everybody else believes that SMEs are the engine of the Absolutely. Nigerian economy. Yeah? So I can imagine with FX, where FX is, the power situation, SMEs seem to be under a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of pressure. Um, your footprint outside of... Um, Nigeria. I think you have a, a UK uh, brand. How's, how's that working out? Working out very well, I must say. Yeah. I'm glad to mention that um, right now, that first of all, it was a strategic move for us. Right. Strategic to support our customers who do international business and also for the country. Remember, this was a bank owned by a Nigerian entity. Yep. And here we are basically strengthening that the play of that entity to support the economy and our customers. Yeah. So it's doing very well. Uh, diaspora clients are using it. We intend to make it a a point of a point of attraction for our diaspora clients and also international businesses that um, that will be looking at international trade. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's doing very well. Month on month, we're doing it's much better than where it was when we took it over. You, you mentioned uh, I always uh, want to discuss technology with with the, with the banking sector in Nigeria. Um, you mentioned digital banking, embracing, and so on. Does um, does that mean less physical branches? The more you trend towards the electronic side, and I may I'll ask you about artificial intelligence and all these other things. What, what's, what's, the, how you, what's your outlook as far as digital banking and where things are going? Not necessarily. It doesn't necessarily mean that physical branches will, will die off yeah. because um, our industry analysis shows that there's a correlation between the branch network you have mm. and your deposit liability growth. Yeah. There's a correlation. So yes, indeed, Digital banking is a future, so we will pursue it, and we're pursuing it aggressively as, as a bank. Yeah. But at the same time, we're mindful of opening up physical branches where there's a need for it. Okay, and then uh, another thing I'd love to talk to you about is, I guess, speaking of physical branches, the operational costs. Uh, again, I, I keep, I, I really do respect your position because when it comes to risks in <laughs> doing business in different countries, it's not easy. You always, there's so many pots on the fire. For um, operational costs, we've seen where diesel prices are now, right? right Over right. you know a thousand five. How's that affecting you know oper operations up across? I'll, across I'll, the say, I'll say not much, not and much. I'll tell you why. Okay. The reason is some time back, as a bank, we took that we took a decision to focus more on sustainable banking and reduce our carbon footprint. Okay. So we've de-emphasized the use of diesel in a lot of our branches. Mm. We've gone solar. We've also deployed energy efficient equipment across board. So that's, that has helped to moderate our demand for diesel. So this price hike, it, we, we've been able to uh, push through it very well. Yes. Um, so back to technology, sorry, I yes. apologize. It's one of my favorite topics. Um, 
What's, her, what's your view on AI? Do you think that artificial intelligence will replace bank tellers and or will it make banks more productive? How are you viewing the artificial intelligence? Is it, is it hype? How are you viewing AI you know, and so on and so forth? AI, AI, according to some experts, AI and a few other things are some of the big waves that will hit the entire world. The same way internet has just right. hit everybody. Yeah. So it's a, it's a key area. It's very, it's very important. I think the opportunities, we see opportunities with AI, opportunities to improve efficiency, um, make yourself more productive, and so on. But there are also risks. Yeah. You're talking to the chief risk officer. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so there are also risks. Yeah. Risks relating to ethics, um, biases, uh, governance overall. So those things are there. So in Fidelity, we are, we are adopting a cautious approach. We've deployed AI in things like fraud, uh, fraud detection, for instance. We look at your customer, customer profiles. And if anything happens in your account that is outside what we expect, there's an AI solution that will pick that up and escalate to someone to review and a decision will be taken whether to allow that transaction to go through mm. or to put a hold on it. So yeah. that's AI. We're also looking at AI in the area of credit extension. Uh -huh. Some credit extensions are routine and can easily be done by an AI. So we can pass that to, to an AI to at least do some preliminary evaluation and then pass on to someone to make the final call. And of course, we use AI in various other routine areas like you know, USSD, IV chat box, those kind of things. So we see AI as holding opportunities, but the risks are there. So we're approaching in a very cautious manner, but maximizing the opportunities as much as we can. Fantastic. Um, so I guess um, when, you, when you look at the Nigerian economy and you look at the possible headwinds facing the financial sector, is, it, is foreign exchange the, the biggest headwind or is it, um, is it, you know, I guess the disposable income of customers and the ability to be able to make more um, deposits into your bank? What, what, what are the risks that the headwinds you're looking at as you look at 2024? Yeah, the, the health of the economy is primary because yeah. we, we are within this economy. And the key thing that has been driving what we see is inflation. Uh -huh. So we have, we're, we're quite happy that the CBN is targeting inflation, and hopefully that should bring an impact. Now, FX has, I think we're seeing some, some successes with, with, with FX, which is very good on the, for everybody. Uh, so I would say the health of the economy is the most important risk factor overall. Mm. And there are various sub-elements, quite all right. But if we, if we approach it from the MPC viewpoint, which is less target inflation, clearly the way it's going, there will be some, some offsets in terms of economic growth, yeah? But by and large, if we get the economy right in the medium, short to medium term, then we'll see uh, long-term prosperity for every one of us. And that will also come into the banking sector. All right, Mr. Kevin Ogoke, okay, look, I could have asked you 10 more questions. Uh, you, I really do respect what chief risk officers in the financial sector are doing. It's not an easy job. Uh, F chief risk officer, Fidelity Bank PLC, thank you so much for your time for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me.